Right, Edeka, audited Edeka one time, <coughs> or rather not Edeka, but for Edeka I audited something else called Bomi, but going back a long, 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 long time, back in BDO days, I think BDO looked after Edeka. And uh, here we go, 3,500 just crossed, 3,502 here, 752 there. So you put those two together, and you get 4,250 something, um, being the expected full, full um, incredible journey. Yeah, 4,254 effectively, which is just uh, some, somehow or other 10 kilometres dropped along the way somehow, maybe uh, motorway shortening or something like that, but uh, it's not on here. Um, just about to come to a border that isn't a border anymore, namely the border of... Um, East and West Germany. We're about to be to pass a place called Helmstedt. Um, I have to get for my wife some uh, some malt, malt drinks, a German Malzgetränke, which like Vita Malz or Karamalz. These are um, these are basically byproducts of brewing that uh, sort of sweetened and turned into drinks, which are especially good for women who are um, breastfeeding. I, st I started. When my wife was breastfeeding Sophie, I started to give her these, bring these drinks to her from Germany. And she, but she now she just, just drinks them for the flavour. She likes the flavour of them. But um, and so when she when I go through Germany, she asked me to get her a pallet of these uh, of these drinks. But I didn't want to get them in the West because they would be, they could be a bit cheaper in the East. There could be better bargains on the in the supermarkets available in the east rather than in the west. Um, pricing does vary slightly within Germany, depending on whereabouts in Germany you are, so uh, and also less time in a hot car can't help to benefit the product as well, I should think. Anyway, that's why I didn't get them in the west, and now we're coming to the east, um, and Helmstedt is indeed the old border town from the western side, the last place that you would come to on this major east-west road, the road to Berlin from the west. This was always the, the place that people would go through on the road, and I have done this. I've gone through on this road when it was still um, when it was still uh, you know West Berlin. I, I've hitchhiked through it, um, which was something. A very pleasant person gave me a lift through East Germany to uh, to West Berlin. Anyway, this this Tankstelle has an interesting hotel behind it that I've used on several occasions, but you won't see it anymore because they put big screens up. You can barely see what's going on there. But it's uh, a BP one. You can't see much because of the screens now. Um, a bit of a pity, I suppose, but. Uh, Basically what we're coming to now would be the old no man's land you see, that used to exist. Here we have Waldkarta, is, uh, is the name of a parking space which used to be part of the old uh, customs and border area. Um, We've got something called Gedenkstätte Marienborn. Marienborn is, was the first town on the on the eastern side. Marienborn was on uh, in East Germany. Now, if I go slowly through here, you may see the uh, the remains that they've left to remind people of a once divided Germany. There's a 
there, there's a statue there which shows the which shows the uh, uh, ehemalige in der Deutsche Ganze 45 bis 90 so uh, 1945 to, to 1990 there's a bit of wall there's a bit of um, the old customs area obviously uh, not used anymore for that purpose and what we have here is somebody's written something on it but that's an old Wachtturm these were all the way down and this used to have this thing here which is now empty in the middle the, the red the circle area in the middle of that used to have DDR written in it Deutsche Demokratische Republik and the German flag in a in a circular arrangement used to be there oh and they've kept up one more here one more Wachturm one more watchtower, as people don't start thinking about Jehovah's Witnesses if I say watchtower. Um, but uh, there's another one up here. And there's Marienborn's. This was the other part of it. You can still see the awning left there from former times. Um, and all of the lighting that was there to make sure people didn't muck about. And here we'll pass this so that I can give you a better look at the watchtower. That used to be used by communist East German border guards to make sure that people, you know, didn't try to uh, mess about. People had to stay within their cars. There were certain places you could come off the road and, and rest, and there were certain state-owned um, uh, refreshment areas where you could buy for hard currency um, um, well just ordinary refreshments basically and you had to if you wanted to go into um, East Berlin or into yeah you could go in but you had to have Eintrittsgeld you had to have 25 marks per person per day um, which is a, effectively and they had uh, uh, that, that they made one Ostmark and one Westmark be the same. So you had to basically take in 12 euros per person per day. Yeah, about 10 pounds. But I can tell you that that 10 pounds went an awful long way. You wouldn't get anywhere near uh, the value today in East Berlin, which doesn't exist, of course, it's just Berlin. So, in, But in the parts of Berlin that were East Berlin, if you go there with... Uh, with 12 and a half euros today, it won't see you through all of the things. I mean, for my 25 Ostmarks, I got a couple of LPs of, of Russian songs, some other souvenirs, a meal. Um, apart from the main meal, I got coffee and cakes later, and um, and a boating uh, half an hour on a or an hour on a boating lake, and then messing about in Kopernik Park with huge, great big chess set with. Um, Andrew Sheldrake, who is now Rabbi Benjamin Sheldrake, and you can see him amongst my LinkedIn contracts. Very nice guy. Very, very nice guy. And um, that was all very good fun, but of course those were the days you couldn't get anything like the value. I should think that to spend the same these days, uh, you would need, I don't know, maybe ten times as much money just to do the same as you used to do in uh, when we were kids in, in the east in the communist east of Europe you probably need ten times as much to do the same <laughs> there you go there's progress for you when I think back to my first this is of course now the East German Road it's a lot of it's in the same kind of shape as it's been in for an awful long time. Um, some of it was repaired for the, uh, the change back to the capital of Berlin. So, uh, as well, they've had uh, ch uh, a lot of work done for the for when they had the European Championships for football as well. They did a lot of work on their motorways. So um, yeah, but if I look back, if I look back at my first salary. Um, that was actually a Lithuanian with the HG plate. It's just complete coincidence that uh, he's got a plate that looks like a, a, a local German one because 
It can't possibly be that a Lithuanian HE is anything to do with Helmstedt. But um, if I look back at my first salary when I left university, this was just before the fall of communism. I think my first salary was something like £500 per month and it got down to about £400 a month after tax. So you can't do much these days on £400 a month, that's for sure. But uh, I don't think that many people are on starting salaries in accountancy of £400 a month take home because to be frank with you even in Poland people are starting on more than that and that's a that's a labour market where generally speaking the wages are about a sixth of what they are in the UK